Hey, Ray from LoveYourRV.com again. We're really starting to settle into our summer spot here on Vancouver Island. And I've come up with another seven tips for you RVers, especially for you newbie RVers. Um, these are just sort of random tips that I use. And uh, my tips videos are very popular, so I thought I'd uh, release another one. So uh, I'll stop yakking now and let's get to the tips. First tip is uh, cleaning the screen door. Every once in a while I like to, to clean up the screen door. We end up with a lot of dust in the, the screen itself or sitting down here. And uh, I'll show you an easy way to do it. If yours is anything like mine, you'll have six screws just like that. So it's uh, pretty simple to uh, just pop those screws out and take the whole door off. So then I just lay it out on the grass and get a bucket of uh, soapy water. Usually just use Dawn dishwashing soap. Nice soft br bristled brush. And I find it uh, takes no time to uh, clean that all up. And I'll give it a good hose, hose off and she'll be uh, clean as a whistle with barely any effort. And there we go all back in place and nice and shiny white and clean again. Right Beagle? Right Beagle? Right? Yeah. Okay, so second tip I have for you is using something called a uh, temperature gun. So you can get these uh, most uh, home hardware places or off Amazon and uh, basically they're an infrared light. You can see that. But whatever you point it at, it will give you a temperature reading. So I use it for all sorts of things around the RV. It's one of my most handiest little gadgets. So one thing I routinely do is when I stop at a rest stop or after I've towed, I uh, aim it at the tires and I can get a reading of the temperature of the tires and also at my brakes and my hubs. So if I have a bearing failing in my trailer or a tire that's, you know, not inflated properly so it's running hot, I'll know right away that I have a problem and might save myself from having a blowout or worse. So that's the main reason I got it, but I figured out all sorts of other handy uses for it. One is my barbecue. I can uh, check when the barbecue is all ready for my steaks. It'll give me a readout. You can see there, I got 321 Fahrenheit. Also, around the big blue here, I can uh, check radiator temperatures, um, turbo temperatures. You know, we could go through all the radiators, see if you've got a, a cool spot in the radiator. Same with its tires and hubs. I can check exhaust temperatures. So once you get once you get yourself a known uh, temperature, then you know you give it a check and it's you can tell what's beyond the normal getting too hot for you. And let's see what else do I do with this sucker. Well, yeah, let me go inside. I'll show you a few things I do in there. Okay, it's also a great way to check if your uh, air conditioner is working properly. So I'm picking up around 71 on that door. If I shine it inside the duct, you can see I'm you know right around. And get down as much as 51, so I'm getting close to a 20 degree difference, and that's uh, fairly normal for the for the air conditioning system I have. Also, if we go down here, refrigerator, excellent way to see if your fridge is working properly. Just shoot it at stuff in there, and you'll get different uh, degrees. Looks like the strawberries are at 37. But up higher, we can get a little lower up with the yogurt. And we'll check the freezer. Shoot at the freezer wall in here. We're way down. Yeah. So you'll know if your fridge is uh, not operating properly as well. Yeah, so I highly recommend one of those. The infrared temperature sensor gun. I think I paid about 60 bucks for this. Seems like a lot, but there's just so many uses for it. Um, probably lasts a long time too. 
Um, one other thing I forgot, I use it to check my uh, oven temperatures because the, the temperature on the dial on the gas oven in there is totally inaccurate so if you're making a cake or something and you need exact uh, temperature this thing will tell you exactly when the oven's ready to go. Um, other things I use it in when it's cold out I can see where I'm, I'm losing uh, heat out of the rig you know going along the walls and windows and stuff like that so just all kinds of uses for that. Tip number three I'll call my patch it or hold it together tip. These are a few of the things I carry in the rig in case I need to have an emergency repair of some sort. Um, first few two are tape. Good old Gorilla Tape, black, extra thick. That'll, that I can use to help hold on a piece that's coming off the RV. Also use it on my underneath. I have kind of a black uh, coroplast plastic under, under the rig and um, I've cut some slots in there to do maintenance work and I need to, to patch them back up once I'm finished so that stuff works great. Just sticks to uneven surfaces really well. The other type of tape I have is the stuff I've been using on the roof called a turnip bond and this does amazing. It's great on the roof. Um, once you peel off this plastic layer you get a super sticky membrane and um, I think this would be good for patching plumbing. I bet it could patch it cracked tank with it or a plumbing pipe. It's really good. So between that and that I could hold and patch things. Also good old baling wire. You know if something's falling off the rig underneath suspension pieces or you know on your on your truck uh, your muffler's dragging you just need to hold it up for a while. It's good. To, this stuff's amazing to have. And this stuff I came across one day it's it's like a roll of um, velcro. And uh, that's good for uh, holding stuff together as well. Nice and small, easy to store. So yeah, if, uh, if you're going out full time or for uh, RVing long trips, that's a good collection of things to have. Kind of the just-in-case stuff. Tip number four is for uh, you trailer owners out there with the tandem axles um, to aid you with the leveling. What I've done is, hey, Beagle, get out of the way, is uh, picked up a, a 2x8 and uh, measured it so it'll cover both wheels at the same time. And on the ends there, um, I get it sawed. They'll saw it for you at the lumber yard, or if you have a, a friend or you have a skill saw, you can set it for a 45 degree angle. So both ends are angled. That way, when you back onto it, it's not going to flip up. Um, so that's two by four and then I drill some holes, three holes into it and for my second one I get some uh, kind of fencing bolts, lag bolts, drill another hole and pop them through on that one. Then I can fit this board on top of that board and it won't slide around at all and that will give me a, a even more of a rise when I'm leveling the trailer. I'll just pop that on and show you. There we go. So it makes it really easy to uh, to back up onto, level the trailer. I had a couple kind of plastic ones before, but they were always, you had to just get them set just right. Um, and there wasn't enough space between the wheels for them. There is a set I've seen, I think it's from Anderson, a set of these red kind of kind of curve shaped ones. They look really cool, but last time I priced them, they are around $70 each. So. I guess this will do me for the time being. Also, it's always good to have some wood kicking around, you never know, for other other things. It also comes in handy for using my uh, trail, trailer aid uh, ramp here. This is so that I can easy, quickly change a tire without jacking. I'll just uh, back up one of the tandem tires onto the top of this and it raises up the other tire. But uh, my rig actually has a special equalizer in the suspension and I even need more height and you next to that extra inch and a half the board will give you to allow it to raise so I can set that on that board and uh, with the, the angle it makes it easy to back up onto it if I need to quickly uh, pull a tire off. Say I'm on the side of a freeway or something and I want to change the tire quickly rather than messing around with jacks. 
tip number five has to do with protecting yourself from injury or possibly going to the hospital. So you can see here I've stuck a flag on my hitch and that's after uh, smacking into that thing numerous times and putting big bruises on my hips. Now I finally got smart and stuck something on there. So uh, you can stick a flag or some foam or you know hang something. I've seen people hang flower baskets from it or you know put your name nameplate on it, stuff like that. The other part that is uh, notorious for uh, catching people, not too bad for me because my slide is so low, but people that have a high slide, they hit their head on this corner, sometimes go down concussed, so get yourself a pool noodle, cut a slot in it, that could save you from a big lump on your head. Tip number six is a safety tip. Um, if you're going to be RVing, it's a good idea to carry on board a weather alert radio. Um, that weather alert radio will come on automatically and alert you if there's dangerous weather approaching. So this is my radio. It's called a C Crane 2E. I'm right into listening to AM radio at night and nice. I want a nice tabletop radio, so it's quite expensive. This one. Um, but you can get a weather alert radio decent one for around 50 60 bucks so uh, Here we are on the weather band Usually you can go through the weather bands and you'll find one that's uh, Gonna suit you So on this particular one I have uh, Three different modes. I just go to the alert mode that pops up in this mode what will happen even when the, the, the radio is off it'll uh, come on and a, a flashing light will flash on the front I'll go one more I'll get it'll come on the light will flash but also the radio will turn on and then the final mode here is a siren mode and it'll uh, flash and, and let out a siren for a minute and uh, alert me that something's going on. So yeah, even in the off position, I'll see that alert. So that's really handy, especially for folks that are uh, RVing in uh, areas that might get tornadoes, because you know a tornado and an RV definitely don't mix. So even when you're sleeping, if you have this on, it'll it'll pop up and wake you up and alert you that there's dangerous weather approaching. So uh, that tip could save your life. Right, Annie? Yeah. And tip number seven, my last tip for you today is uh, get yourself a hummingbird feeder. You can get quite uh, small ones that you can stick on your rig's window. And uh, we have a blast actually watching the hummingbirds. I had seen a few rigs have them, so we decided to, to get one, you know. And it's actually quite a bit of fun watching the little guys show up. We've had three or four buzzing in there at one time. And if you like to do photography, you can get some awesome shots of the hummingbirds through the window. So that's kind of a little fun tip for you, especially you full-timers out there. Um, down in the desert, we take it with us, and it's great to see the little hummingbirds show up. I hope you enjoyed those tips and found them useful. Um, if you'd like to see more, I've, I have three or four other videos sort of along the same lines, giving you some quick tips. Uh, you can find them in my YouTube channel. Um, there's a playlist for tips, and also I'll post them in the description of this video. And you can go to my blog, and you'll find them there as well. So, until uh, next time, this is Ray from LoveTheRV.com. I'm going to get back to my uh, bald eagle watching here on Vancouver Island. So cool. That's my buddy Eddie.